What's going on everyone? It's Raj from Eastside Rage and I'm coming at you with a review for Saints Row. Now here's a quick disclaimer. If you're a highly opinionated person and you love the Saints Row reboot or a ride or die Saints Row player, I highly recommend that you do yourself a favor and go watch something else. Because this is going to be a brutally honest review and I'm not pulling any punches. That being said, we are on to the review. Saints Row 2022 is not only the reboot no one asked for with at least two fucking brain cells to rub together, it is also a disaster of a game and gets about nothing right. And I'm not being biased just because I put out that video last year because it looked stupid and yeah, don't front, it actually looked stupid. Come on, bro. It did. I actually put in hours, hours, a lot of hours and ended the game. And I gave it a chance. I gave it a fair chance, but it just doesn't hold up. It feels Saints Row 4 feels more refreshing than this did. All right, everything in this is either generic, broken, or just totally half-assed and outdated. It's like not like fuck that cyberpunk, as like everybody's saying. It's not that bad, but it's a good competitor with the GTA Definitive Edition trilogy of Definitive Edition. It feels like Violation didn't even do any QA testing. They literally know this game was horrible and still released it and sold it for 20 bucks, I mean 60 bucks. For those who don't know what Saints Row is, I'll fill you in. It started off as a street gang type of game where you fight three other gangs for control of a fictional city called Stillwater in both one and two. I mean, except, you know, two, they both have three different gangs, but you get the idea. It really took inspiration off of the Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, um, well, not serious, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas gang, which I believe was the best part of the series and honestly was somewhat more enjoyable than the GTA series. But Violation had other plans and I guess they didn't think you know, it was that great. And they decided they wanted to make their own style. So they moved on to a wackier version where they're all pop culture celebrities in another city called Steelport in Saints Row the Third. There were still three gangs you had to fight. You had to work your way to the top and you had to work your way to the top there. It wasn't awesome, but it still was enjoyable. But then for some fucking reason later, part four came about. This was supposed to be DLC, but they decided to make it an actual installment. And you're the president and an alien race comes by, throws you and your associates in a simulation or whatever of Stillport or wherever they're at, all while destroying Earth, which um, was quite ridiculous. I mean, honestly, it was horrible, but you know, to add insult to injury and you know, I mean, they could have probably, probably saved it. I mean, you know, just said, oh, that was a what if. No, they made another DLC, made which was got out of hell, and um, basically shot themselves in their own foot. All right, killing the series, um, letting it bleed out. It was done. But years later, I'm guessing someone wanted to make this game about friendship and modern day issues us millennials and zoomers have to go through but in a game so instead of them making a spin-off they just like they did with the uh, agents of mayhem i didn't play that yet they decide to make it a saints row game the plot consists of you and your three other roommates i mean you lie a point dexter that you have to teach a ton enough because he doesn't want to shoot a gun Hannah, a mechanic and a driver, and Kev, a shirtless pretty boy, trying to build an organization in a southwestern city called Santo Aloso to work for themselves. When they're constantly falling out, I mean, on jobs and constantly feeling the meet ends meet, you start off as the mercenaries for the marshals and are trying to pay for your college debt. And after getting fired for a petty reason, you decide to be I mean, build a gang because you're good at killing and you have the friends and have friends that are good in other categories. The story is like a joke told by a comedian that you laugh at instead of laughing with. It tries so hard to be relatable, lighthearted, clever, and funny. Sometimes that 
but it fucking fails at all five categories. I mean, hopefully I got all, I mean, got the right numbers right. But anyway, and when some serious shit happens, it, which it really does, I find myself not caring due to how bad the writing is and how underdeveloped the characters fucking are. They're all just so goddamn hollow and nothing is interesting about them. They feel so fucking generic. I mean, <laughs> do really, you really fucking think these three motherfuckers that look like they belong on a fucking CW sitcom or politically correct side of Twitter or tw some tumblerinas with Matt, the memorabilia and charisma is Johnny Gat, Pierce, or Shani, or you know, the old ones, you know, Lynn, I mean, Lynn, Dex, Carl. Los, you know, well, Carlos was in part two, or, you know, Kins Kinsey, you know, people like that, even the main antagonists are poorly written too, I mean, god damn, like, come on, man, like, they, you know, yeah, people try to say the right ones, yeah, the right was the best, but it, the best, but it was decent, they could make pretty memorable freaking, um, Villains in that game, really memorable, you know, protagon. Well, well, okay, the protagonist, you pretty bad. I mean, good buddies or whatever. Come on, like, like you know, I can't even remember the. I only could remember one antagonist name. I'll get to him in a second, but I can't even remember their names. I mean, of the gangs, of the gangs, except Marshall because his name is you know Marshall. But still, man. But you know, I'm gonna. Well, I'll tell you about the main villain right now. And if you don't want to know who the main villain is because it's a twist later, if you're playing it and you don't want to know, I'm going to tell you when to skip to. Noali is a major criminal who decides to stab you in the back by trying to kill you and somehow gets emotionally attached to your friends and kidnaps them. No, seriously. No, fucking seriously. This is this dude's whole motive, a international, well, I don't know if he's an international criminal, but he's a big time criminal, has his own gang, all hiding out and everything, he, um, decides, he wants your friends, man, it was ridiculous, and getting back at him, takes, I mean, takes place through three repetitive, dragged out, and glitchy ass missions, it literally was the worst part in the game, I'm not exaggerating, I mean, well, if you see my stream, you know how much I'm complain been complaining about that. Okay, welcome back to those who didn't want to hear the spoiler. Okay, the dialogue is just cringy. They make so many bad attempts at comedy. It tries to be broke at the same time. I mean, it's like sitting through a fucking college stand-up comedy show. Like, um, when will you know writers understand this? That you know. I mean, unless you know you're making fun of it, politically correctness, I mean, isn't funny. All right, now I'm not trying to say, you know, you know, politically correctness uh, has no business in games, you know, sometimes you need it, but this game relies too much on it. But anyway, this, where the story does good, the story does have a good message, though. It does imply you shouldn't be living someone else's dreams, working for the lowest dollar of your life, and you should be your own boss, eventually, and work for yourself if you're good at something. However, I feel this isn't the sort of game for that. The series has been always about gangs causing chaos and being a proud throw caution the wind psychopath. Not being a killer with a conscious friendship, political correctness, and being and dealing with youth issues. Honestly, it makes no sense. Like I said, Santo Aloso is where Saints Row takes place. It's located in the middle of a desert and consists of three districts. Rancho, Provincia, hopefully I'm saying that right. Not too good at Spanish, forgive me, a factory. It, a trailer area to the gang Los Panteros, a Latino gang full of mechanics that Nina used to run with. Lake Shore, and uh, it also has the Lake Shore, the inner city section ran by the Marshals, a mercenary group that you used to work with, or work for, and Monte Visa, a high class area ran by I, those uh, gang Cav used to work with, they're full of rebellious youth that look like they come from Fortnite Watch Dogs or Apex. You're gonna probably hear me say Fortnite a lot in this because it gives me those type of vibes. 
uh, quoting you, Kiara. Okay, the area appears big at first glance, but once you take a look at the map, you realize it really isn't, and you can give, you know, the actual map, and you could actually, you know, get to the other side of town really quick with a regular car. It's it's just the background of the desert, you know, it's just the background of the desert that makes it look bad. And those aren't playables. Size wouldn't matter, pause, and Duan, you don't you dare say nothing. Don't you dare say nothing, bro, you. <laughs> but anyway, if the world was alive and had some amount of detail to it, you know, yeah, it wouldn't be so bad, but the world just looks like a... Xbox, it was created on Xbox 360 well for it. While driving, I experienced multiple poppins and dips, but I'll get to that later. Although there's different districts, each feels the same. They lack creativity and feel better than your nearest cemetery. You know in GTA 5's Los Santos and Blaine County or any other Grand Theft Auto game, not even any other Grand Theft Auto game, say, you know, any Saints game. I mean, just about any Saints game, any open world game period well most of them most of them for the most part you go to different areas people act different they look different to different situations different here you barely get that not to mention that ai is really buggy i mean hell i mean they're really stupid too i mean i would aim a weapon at them and they would still want to fight you like some some of them some of them not all of them would still want to fight you i mean you know, you hit their car, I mean, shoot their car, they'll chase you down, they don't even have a weapon. It's like, I guess they was trying to be inspired from Grand Theft Auto, however, um, it was, you know, it's way worse or whatever. But yeah, that in that regard, I'm gonna just move on. Um, yeah, you know, and it's a snooze fest, free roaming. It's a snooze fest. Yes, it's filled with a lot of fun activity yeah fun activities i'll get to that later too you can't but you can't even enter buildings outside of this just like unlike the old saints row games you can't do that you can only enter simple stores in your hq all santa Losho is like the map of fortnite and just calls all it's good for is blowing shit up and killing people i know this is where a game where you're supposed to do all that that's this is a series but there's no type of immersion in this one the enemy and partner AI in this game is so broken, so fucking broken. Enemies will just rush towards you and they don't even take cover. I mean, come on, they're, they're bullet sponges. It takes like two clips or to take them out sometimes. It, it will, and they will constantly spawn in front of you, literally spawn in front of you over and over and over and over and over while your idiot teammate is constantly getting killed because they don't know when to fall back or just don't do anything making missions way longer than they fucking have to be and they're not even fun to fight <laughs> and a lot of missions you have to go to a lot of areas just to do the same thing with almost no goddamn variation this game just drags stuff out in the most repetitive ways the missions have a lot of bugs and glitches people items and enemies that you don't that you need some a lot of well sometimes more than often will not spawn will not spawn all right i'm gonna be honest mission markers sometimes do not work partners stay getting stuck a few times a few times i got stuck re in a reloading animation hell at one point i got stuck in one of the, I mean in my one of the fucking cars I mean no not stuck in it I couldn't move any vehicles my bad until I had to dashboard the motherfucker and I mean you know that means if you don't know what I'm talking about exit the application and go back in it was just so ridiculous that's just the tip of the iceberg there's so many glitches and errors in this shit and it's so frustrating like you could literally walk 10 feet outside of a mission zone or whatever and they start the timer like you know sometimes you know i mean sometimes things won't spawn they'll start a timer and you'll fill the mission it's ridiculous and i uh see these goddamn twitter fucking stands i mean no no my bad not twitter stands saint stands on twitter facebook and youtube just saying i mean just saying 
the game just came out, of course there's gonna be a lot of bugs, all games do, a lot of games do, it has a lot of issues that Saints Pro has, like that's the fucking, I don't know how they think that's okay, uh, it doesn't matter, they'll fix it later, come on, a lot, don't, if you don't like it, don't buy it, blah blah blah, please, shut the fuck up, okay, just shut up. This is the same exact reason why companies keep releasing games in this state and will continue to do so because people like you fucking idiots will pay top dollar for it and not hold them accountable. Violation. Knew the game was not ready. Had enough time. They also knew it, uh, it played and still sold it for $60. Uh, $60. They sold it at tech. It's not full price, but that is still $60, and I expect more of an effort. This is a bad thing. Now, if you like the game, whatever. That's on you. I mean, whatever. People got opinions, but at least acknowledge this is a bad practice. There's no justification for it. I'm sure you pay a lot of money for, or even low to high, for things that you use, and you expect great effort and results with them. This should be no different. Anyway, back to the gameplay. The shooting, driving, flying, and fucking controls, movement, and everything feels really outdated and buggy as well. It feels like Saints Row the Third, but with a lot more issues. The aiming is super delayed. I look and I look into the settings and look for the aim and sensitivity. It looks like it can't be changed. I miss my targets off of this sometimes. Even during that Eli mission where you had to shoot the barrels, I had to, I mean, change that. I mean, I had to, you know, restart that mission so many times. All right, as for the weaponry, it's not too crazy, you know. I, uh, yeah, the biggest thing I had was that one of those, uh, like, uh, missile launchers or whatever, but it's, um, uh, it gets the job well when it's not having issues it gets the job done most of the weapons appear to be basic but you know you can modify them make them stronger and change them however you want them to look you could also constantly go to friendly fire because you can <clears throat> only pick up ammo off enemies not shooting weapons i find this to be ridiculous though because it's if i step into a mission i forget to go to my weapons lock get weapons from my weapons locker or whatever I'm stuck with that until the mission's over this game is like two steps forward and a billion light years back the melee system is really inconsistent the animations for it are wonky and you and they're bit not even fluid and you can only perform one takedown like every two minutes in Saints Row 4 or 3 um, it was not an issue and it helped me deal with a lot of enemies I mean when I was rushing rushing or if they got too close all I had to do is hit R3 boom I'm in here I got hit Y once every two minutes yeah now I know you get a few skills or whatever yeah they're pretty useful but you know um with the skill you know regular things from Saints Row 3 I barely had to use them but you know when they when I use them they work so I give them that as for the driving Driving's pretty flowy, floaty and pretty inept. I find myself flying towards buildings after drifting around corners or getting spent out really fast during chase segments. Not to mention the driver AI is really stupid. They'll cut you off, react horribly to accidents, and um, they have glitches too. For example, I hit a truck and it, he spun out. He somehow spun out, although I was in a little like battery car instead of. Uh, it going in the direction of traffic, it turns around and starts running into cars, knocking them off the bridge. Which brings me to the car damage. There's billion car damage. You, I mean, damage unless you're being rammed by an enemy or shot at. Other than that, you can just run, I mean, ram through anything at any car. They'll go flying and your car will remain intact you can knock down trees with the car yes trees both great and small the physics in the game what physics the, the god man fucking just cause has more physics i mean has better physics a train can even clobber you you, you if you just stand there why moves it literally does that there are no new 
there are my bad no sorry red demo there are some new and old activities you can get into a you do plus I'm getting to a few plus a few businesses I made a typo right there that each comes with side missions do to do um however they get born really fast and barely see any improvements from each task Yes, there's a lot of chaos you could cause throughout the world, and you're gonna get reward handsomely for doing that. With a set of health scales that can be equipped, over the top, I mean vehicles, crazy clothing, and of course, money. However, the game feels, feels lacking in refreshing in content, you know, I mean, lacking in content, you know, the content doesn't feel that refreshing you know especially the new some and they bring a lot of old stuff back and you know it does feel like a met effortless reboot due to that <sighs> well um there are a few things i do like you know um uh, honestly even though this game you can see i don't really like it, it i think it's a failure but the things I do like is the skill system. I mentioned that earlier, but the, there's a customization. That's what I really like. It's phenomenal. It's a really step up in this apartment. This apartment. You can make your character exactly how the way you want and import bosses and use other people's bosses that were imported. They got, I mean, bosses looking like Shaggy, even the Joker from, I mean, from, you know, the latest Joker movie. I mean, maybe they got the Joker from, looking like the Joker from the other movies, but ama it's amazing. You could also customize your HQ. They brought that, you know, brought that back, you know. I uh, kind of missed that or whatever. You could customize your, you know, the, your hideouts. Well, you couldn't customize the church. It just filled up over time, but still. You could also customize your clothing to the fullest, cars, gangs, guns, you name it. You can do it. You can customize just about anything. It's amazing. That's amazing. I, oh yeah, and the music is also on point. I love it. It was what kept me going through, uh, you know, these repetitive, now the repetitive, you know, driving cycles that you had to do, even though there was fast travel in it. Um, you could only fast travel to the church and you got only could do it during missions. I'm pretty sure you could fast travel to something else, but I didn't get too much into the criminal adventures. If only they put this amount of effort to the narrative characters world and gameplay, this game would have been a lot better. I also love the military vehicle segments, they're pretty hot too. I have more fun blowing people up and killing them from the air instead of the ground. And normally, I don't really like flying shit that much, but you know, the ground combat system is just so inept that, you know, this was a lot easier. Okay, moving on to the verdict. Saints Row 2022 is a sorry excuse for a long-awaited reboot and is a perfect example of what happens when a company doesn't listen to its fans. Violation Inc.'s arrogance and stubbornness keeps leading them to release piss-poor games as quantity over quality. I mean, people last year on Twitter when they released this was trying to tell them, hey, put this, you know, maybe you should uh, put this back or whatever, maybe you should uh, back it up. We think, no, they're, they were telling them, haters gonna hate, yeah, you don't like it, don't buy it. They were being unapologetic. Well, I'm being unapologetic here too. It feels very outdated, brings a lot of bad ideas to the table, lets good, new and good, interesting content, has bad AI, I mean, AI all overall, the world feels flat, it was released in the most horrible state. I mean, it has a rush, piss for writing with boring characters. And that is why I am rating it a 4 out of 10. People might be, I believe I am being too hard on it, but Violation keeps on doing this and they're getting worse, honestly. They do not care about, you know, their customers. It's obvious. It feels like 75% of the game's budget went to the customization settings and the licensing for the music. There's no effort in this at all. Don't know. I don't know if they're going to come out with a new part two. I'm not sure. And I honestly could give a happy fuck because I'm done with this franchise. And if you guys disagree and I'm, I'm wrong, please show me, YouTube. Go ahead. Show me. You tell me. This game that I played and recorded my voice over is worth $60. Please tell me how this game is 
a good game and it deserves all this recognition. It deserves to be uh, over a six. I would love to hear that. Anyway, it's been real. This is Roger the Rage just signing out. Well, my bad. Raj from Eastside Rage signing out. Keep raging out.